welcome to Story Lab. This week we're talking about grit. While we take a look at the story of someone whose life went from bad to good, that's enough to make your head spin. Oh, and there's this. Here it goes. I'm Amaya. And I'm Zeke. And we're talking about grit, which is refusing to give up when life gets hard. What's under the plates? I don't know, actually. How do you not know? Well, today's story includes a mysterious dream with food. So, mystery food challenge. Oh, oh, the, oh this is great. Those plates could be filled with all sorts of awesome, weird flavored gummies. Well, I got my friend to set it up for us. You know what? Why don't you do the honors? Oh. <clears throat> mystery vegetable challenge. The mystery vegetable challenge. Oh, I have a bad feeling about this, all the way from my taste buds down to my stomach. Oh, come on. Vegetables can be tasty. Only with ranch dressing. Oh, do we get ranch? Um, I don't know. Let me see. Okay, it says here that we each pick a dish, then we see who can finish eating whatever vegetable they get. I don't know. Come on, you can totally do this. Grit, remember? Can I cook mine with bacon? <laughs> Just pick. Fine. Here it goes. Ooh, that's a lot of carrots. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna beat you. <laughs> you don't even know what your veggie is yet. Yeah, but I like vegetables. They're good for you. Just pick. All right. <laughs> Yum. Yum. Oh, this is great. Let's go. You like vegetables, right? Yeah. On your marks. Get set. Go! I'm on there, I'm gonna beat you. Uh -oh. I won! I won! I won! I'm the master. And I think it's time for... The story before the story. Today, we're in the very first book of the Old Testament, Genesis. God created the whole amazing world, but people turned away and broke their relationship with God. Still, God had a plan. God called Abraham and Sarah and promised to bless the whole world through their family line. One of Abraham's great grandkids, Joseph, was sold into slavery in Egypt by his own brothers and then thrown in prison even though he done nothing wrong. But even there, God was with him and Joseph didn't give up. That's where our story starts. Take it away, Brian. Hey everyone. Well, we are at the bottom of the roller coaster in Joseph's life. <laughs> Let's find out if it gets any better. During his time in prison, Joseph had interpreted the dream of Pharaoh's drink taster and asked the man to put in a good word for him, you remember? But the drink taster forgot, until two years later, when Pharaoh called his advisors together. I had two dreams last night. Who can tell me what they mean? No one could help Pharaoh until the drink taster, aha, finally remembered Joseph. Pharaoh called for Joseph at once. Now. <laughs> It must have been a serious shock to be pulled out of prison after so many years and marched straight into the palace. I've heard you can tell what dreams mean. Oh, I can't do it, but God will give the answer. I saw seven fat cows come out of the river, but then seven thin, ugly cows came up after and ate the fat cows. After that, I dreamed about seven full heads of grain on a stem Seven weak, thin heads grew up after them and swallowed up the seven good heads. God has shown you what will happen. Seven good years with plenty of food are coming. 
but then seven years without enough food will follow. Pharaoh should look for a wise, understanding man to take charge and store some of the food in the good years so there will be food to use later. God has made all this known to you. I'm putting you in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Think about it. It had been years from the time Joseph's brothers sold him until he was taken out of prison. And then, in a single morning, he was made second in the command of the whole land of Egypt. Joseph traveled all over Egypt and helped to store up grain during the seven plentiful years. And when the years of hunger began, Pharaoh sent everyone to Joseph to buy food. Now, the famine spread far beyond Egypt. It even reached into Canaan where Joseph's father Jacob and Joseph's brothers lived. And they soon became desperate for something to eat. I've heard there's grain in Egypt. Go buy some for us so we won't die. Jacob would not let his youngest son, Benjamin, go. But the older ten brothers made the long journey to Egypt and came before Joseph. Joseph's brothers bowed down to him, just as Joseph had dreamed about so long before. We've come to buy grain. We're hungry. Joseph recognized them, but they did not know who he was. So Joseph decided to test them. You're spies. No, we were 12 brothers, sons of one man in the land of Canaan. Our youngest brother is now with our father, and one brother is gone. Joseph continued to test his brothers. He ordered them to leave Simeon behind, return home, and come back with Benjamin as proof of their innocence. Joseph had their sacks filled with grain and sent them away. Along the way, the brothers discovered that their money had been returned. When they arrived home, they showed Jacob the grain and told him everything that had happened. We have to take Benjamin back with us. Joseph is gone, Simeon is gone, I won't let you take Benjamin. Uh, at first, Jacob refused to let Benjamin go, but soon, all the grain brought from Egypt was gone. Go back. Buy us a little more food. The man warned us we can't return without Benjamin. I promise to keep him safe. All right, but take gifts along. Take twice the money. May God cause this man to show you mercy. Once again, the brothers made the long trek to Egypt, this time with Benjamin. Ooh. When they arrived, Joseph ordered that the brothers be taken to his own house, where a special meal was prepared. Is your father still living? He is alive and well. When Joseph heard that his father was still alive and saw his younger brother Benjamin, he was so moved, he left the room and wept. Then a short time later, at last, Joseph told his brothers who he was. I am your brother Joseph. The one you sold into Egypt. But don't be angry with yourselves. God sent me ahead of you to save many lives. Then Joseph hugged his brothers and wept. He forgave them. He told them to return to Canaan and bring Jacob and the rest of the families to live in Egypt where they would have enough food. And that's exactly what happened. Joseph's entire family packed up and traveled to Egypt. Joseph finally saw his father Jacob again. The whole family settled in a place called Goshen and had enough to eat through the rest of the famine. Mm -mm. The end. That is epic. I mean, Joseph's brothers did something terrible. Yeah, but God flipped it upside down. God made sure that Joseph was in the right place at the right time with the power to save his whole family. Yeah, that's right. Jacob's family actually became the Israelites. And remember, God promised to bless the whole world through them. In fact, hundreds of years later, Jesus was born into Jacob's family line. Through the life and death and resurrection of Jesus, every single one of us can be forgiven. Phew. So what's our part in this story? Well, Joseph held on through some difficult times, right? But all those hard pieces ended up leading to something amazing. So we can look at how God worked in Joseph's story and trust that God is at work in our lives too. Oh yeah, absolutely. God is big enough and amazing enough to take something that seems awful and still work out a good ending. Like if you have to move away from your friends. Or maybe you get sick right before a big trip you've been super excited about. God can see the bigger story, even if we can't. God knows how things will be made right in the end. Yeah, we might just have to wait a little longer than we like. You know what? I think you two got it. 
See you next time. So here's the thing. Hold on because there's a bigger story and that can give you grit. You really don't have to finish that. Oh, you bet I am because the bigger story for this broccoli is sauteed with some bacon. Well, we can't finish without finding out what's in the last dish. Oh, go for it. Seriously? Don't worry. <laughs> I got this. Watch this. Impressive. <laughs> Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you next time. <laughs>